गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन आई एम डॉक्टर हरमन सेकेंड ईयर पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट स्टूडेंट फ्राम एम जी एम मेडिकल कॉलेज एंड आई बी प्रेजेंटिंग अ केस ऑफ पॉलियोस्टॉटिक रेन्यूफेशियल फाइब्रस डिस्प्लेजिया विद बायोलेट्रल ऑप्टिक नर्व कंप्रेशन सो नाइनटीन ईयर ओल्ड मेल प्रेजेंटेड विद नो विजन इन लेफ्ट आई फॉर सिक्स ईयर्स एंड माइल्ड ब्लरिंग ऑफ विजन इन राइट आई फॉर वन ईयर ऑन ग्रॉस एग्जामिनेशन आई नोटिस अ लेफ्ट साइडेड फ्रंटल बल्ज एंड द लेफ्ट आई बॉल वॉज प्रोपटोज एंड इनफीरियरली डिसप्लेसड the visual acuity in the right eye was uh, 618 and in the left eye patient had no perception of light on slit lamp examination the significant findings in the right eye was a uh, central nebular opacity in the cornea and in the left eye uh, the patient had an rapd and a traumatic cataract rest examination anterior segment was within normal limits axial length of the eyeball is as follows 22.5 for the right eye 21.9 for the left the pictures show the central nebular opacity in the right eye and the posterior segment of the right eye was well within normal limits this picture shows the traumatic cataract due to a blunt trauma sustained in the left eye 3 uh, years ago as stated by the patient a manual sics was done in uh, the left eye for cosmetic reasons because the patient wanted a black pupil and the cataractous lens was removed along with the adherent and wrinkled capsule and the eye was left effaced the post op fundus examination of the left eye revealed uh, an optic disc pallor and severely attenuated vessels and diffusely thinned out retina with multiple atrophic patches and we can see the sclera shining through the atrophic patches uh, atrophic uh, choroid and retina a ct head was ordered which shows mixed sclerotic and lytic intra osseous lesions uh, showing ground glass appearance in the figure a we can see the lesion in the left frontal bone in the figure b we can see the lesion in the ethmoid ear sinuses and uh, the greater wing of sphenoid uh, thus affecting the medial and lateral orbital walls on the left side and in the figure c we can see a reduction in the size of the maxillary sinus uh, the lesion was also extending into the pterygoid causing ballooning of the pterygoid plate on the left side and also the left hemimandible figure a shows the left pterygoid uh, plate affected and the figure b shows the left hemimandible affected MRI brain and orbit showed near complete obliteration of the left optic canal on uh, the left optic canal and the left optic nerve was severely compressed and due to the chronic compression uh, left optic nerve atrophy was observed uh, we can see in the figure b the left optic nerve is uh, pretty compressed and uh, in the figure a we can see the mass effect on the brain parenchyma on the left side but there is no midline shift of the structures there was also mild narrowing of the right optic canal Uh, along with mild toxicity of the optic nerve course uh, and the optic canal transverse diameters were as follows so on the right side it was 3.5 mm and on the left side it was 2.5 mm uh, the normal value is 3.6 mm so my differentials were uh, fibrous dysplasia of the craniofacial variety mccune albright syndrome paget's disease cherubism and focal cemento osseous dysplasia Uh, the additional investigations done were hearing assessment using pure tone audiometry was within normal limits so the eighth nerve was not affected alkaline phosphatase was within normal limits ruling out paget's disease there was no history of any bone pain or fracture there were no cafe au lait spots and there were no endocrinopathies as all the hormone levels were normal ruling out mccune albright syndrome uh, there was no shepherd's hook deformity seen on uh, x-ray of the hip joint uh, which is actually a characteristic of fibrous dysplasia so my diagnosis uh, according to the radiological and clinical findings comes down to polyostotic craniofacial fibrous dysplasia with bilateral optic nerve compression for the treatment we got a neurosurgeon consult and the patient was advised to be on 3 monthly follow up to monitor for worsening of the disease which would be indicated by worsening of vision or visual field in the right eye uh, prophylactic decompression surgery is not advised uh, as a primary surgical procedure due to complications of the procedure itself and also the disease tends to flare in uh, puberty and dies down after puberty so uh, fibrous dysplasia is basically a disease where the normal bone is replaced by immature fibrosis tissue which is softer and weaker than normal and it usually affects the long bones ribs craniofacial bones and pelvis when accompanied by endocrinopathies and cafe au lait spots it is called mccune albright syndrome and uh, craniofacial involvement is seen in 20% of the cases and it may be monoostotic or polyostotic uh, the most catastrophic complication is optic nerve compression 
and uh, the patient can present with uh, diminished color vision, restricted visual fields, and visual acuity. These are my references. Thank you. Nice presentation. Uh, you have very good images, and uh, you have uh, also masked the patient uh, identity. That is good. You can also label them. Yes, sir. Uh, that would be even good. Yes, sir. So, wha what was the okay. advice given to the patient? Uh, sir, so uh, the disease uh, presents in uh, childhood, and it progresses in puberty, and then dies down after puberty. So, we have put the patient on three monthly follow-up to monitor if there is any worsening in the right eye uh, vision or there is any radiological worsening of the disease on the right side uh, so that uh, because if if more optic canal compression is detected we will have to go for therapeutic decompression surgery and just one point is uh, you would also have to monitor the visual fields that yes sir that would be much easier to do than the repeat images yes sir what is the chance of getting the right eye involvement uh, as per the literature you have searched. Uh, it is a, not a unique entity to everybody. Yes, it sir. is a unique for, a, for that patient. Yes, it sir. is variable. And in that also, what is the chance of getting the other eye involvement in the literature? Uh, sir, according to the literature I, I have uh, seen, there were uh, no involvement of the other side. Uh, it was just unilateral in uh, all the literature studied. Thank you, sir.